airport security is the stressful necessity standing between you and your dream vacation. Today, I am going to share 19 common airport security mistakes that you might be making and how you can avoid them, getting you to where you want to be with a lot less stress. Let's go. Mistake number one not checking in for your flight online before leaving for the airport. There are several airport security mistakes that you can avoid by making the right moves before you even ever head out for the airport. And checking in ahead of time is a big one. <laughs> there is a rare chance that you might be selected randomly for additional screening. In the first place you might discover this is if you find you're not able to check in online or by using your airlines app. If this is the case for you, I would highly recommend you plan to arrive at the airport at least an hour or so before you were originally planning to get there. If you end up with that dreaded four S's, S S S S symbol on your boarding pass, you are going to be in for a much more in-depth security process, which could add quite a bit of time onto your security experience. This is relatively rare, but it could happen to anyone. And the best way to make sure you're not going to be the chosen one is to check in for that flight as soon as you can. Mistake number two, not packing your toiletries correctly. I have done so many videos on how to pack toiletries for the TSA that would be great to watch after you finish this video. I will have them linked below and in that first pinned comment for you to find. This is really more important to those of you that want to travel with carry-on luggage only and don't want to have to check any baggage in. The, the basics are whatever liquids you are going to be bringing through the airport security need to be in a container that is is 100 milliliters or 3.4 ounces or less. And all of those liquid items need to fit in a quart size bag. Interestingly, airport securities around the world have different protocols when it comes to liquids. And a very, very few airports have eliminated their liquids requirements altogether. When we were traveling between Japan and Korea, no one ever asked us about liquids or required us to take them out of our bags. However, I know that there are some certain European airports that are very, very strict. I'm looking at you, Paris, <laughs> about their liquids bags. To be on the safe side, even though I travel with this really nice TSA approved liquids bag by Trip Travel, when traveling to Europe, I would double pack my liquids inside a quart size bag inside this trip travel bag. That way, if I ever get any pushback about the size of the liquids bag, I can easily pull everything out and transfer it to their approved bag. Mistake number three, not packing your electronics correctly. I have TSA pre-check, so I generally don't have to pull out my electronics or my liquids, <laughs> but I still pack my personal item bag like I might be asked to pull all of these things out. And I will say the most consistent item I usually have to pull out is my laptop. Generally, they are going to want your larger electronics items pulled out and put into separate bins. Your laptop will need to go in a bin by itself, but other electronics like your Nintendo Switch and iPad can go in a bin together. I have never been asked to pull out my Kindle or e-reader, but it's best to pack it just in case they decide they want those removed from your personal bag too. I also try to pack all the rest of my electronic items together in one bag, like the charger blocks and my charging cables, the portable batteries, earbuds, and such. So so if they, for whatever reason, want me to pull those out, it's easy to do. Mistake number four, while we're talking about packing correctly, don't forget to pack your prescription medicines or breast milk or anything like that all together in a bag that is easy to remove from your personal item. These items do not have to meet the TSA liquids rules, but you may be asked to remove them so security can confirm that they are what you say they are. <laughs> it's unlikely, but sometimes they do ask for you to pull those out. Mistake number five, 
picking a travel day outfit that may get you just a little extra unwanted attention from security. Common things that you should avoid wearing on those travel days to the airport include belts, shoes that tie, big bulky jewelry, scarves, overly baggy clothes, which can include maxi dresses, anything metallic from sequins on your shirt to, you know, sweaters that have those uh, metallic threads going through them. Just make sure none of those items are included in the travel day outfit that you are planning to wear. Mistake number six, not wearing socks. Even if you are wearing slip-on shoes that you usually don't wear socks with, you're going to want to wear socks on your travel day. You don't want to have to walk through that screening machine barefoot. Trust me, it's just gross. <laughs> so wear socks. If you don't want to wear them after you go through screening, then just tuck them away in your personal item. Mistake number seven, packing a questionable item without checking to see if it is TSA approved. If you have an item and you are unsure if you can bring it in your carry-on, there are several ways that you can check. Obviously, the first is to do a Google search, but a more accurate way is to either download the TSA app, which I will have linked below, or you can send TSA a message on Facebook or uh, X Twitter <laughs> asking them about the item. They are very responsive, usually giving you an answer in just a few hours, but definitely within 24 hours. Mistake number eight. While we're talking about the TSA app, the next mistake is not checking to see how long the current wait is at the airport. And if you are TSA pre-check, you can make sure that the TSA pre-check line is actually open. I've had some early morning flights where I've arrived and TSA pre-check nor TSA was even open yet. If I had checked the app, I might've gotten another half an hour of sleep. You know, I like my sleep. <laughs> Mistake number nine, once you're at the airport and before you even start to get in the line for security, make sure your water bottle is empty. This is the most common mistake that I see. If you get all the way through security and your personal item goes through the scanner and they flag it because you have a water bottle with water in it, they are either going to make you chug all the water or go back to the other side of security to dump the water and go through the line all over again. Or worst case, especially if you have one of those nice Yetis or Stanley cups, they may even confiscate it. So take a minute before you ever get in line and either drink all of your water or dump your water. There are usually plenty of water fountains around or a bathroom you can go in to dump it out if you don't want to drink it. Mistake number 10, while you're taking that minute to drink your water, also do a pocket check. Make sure absolutely everything is out of all of your pockets. Now, if you're wearing a jacket, they are going to make you remove that jacket and put it in a bin. What I like to do, if I haven't had a chance to do it before I get to the airport, is take all the important items I like to keep close to me <laughs> and have those securely in my jacket pockets. I'll just hold on to my passport to go through security. Although some Sometimes they don't want you to have anything in your hands, including your passport. So that would go in a jacket pocket too when I put it in a bin. But you also want to make sure that all of the little stuff is out of your pants pockets or maybe you have a shirt that has pockets. I don't know. But things like candy wrappers and Kleenex. I've even had a hair tie in my pocket that's caused me to have a little bit of extra screen. Mistake number 11. Now that you are ready to get in the security line, mistake number 11 is not having your ID and boarding pass ready for the TSA agent to look at. These are the only two things I like to have in my hand as I'm going through the security line. If you have your boarding pass on your phone, make sure you already have it pulled up before it's your turn to talk to the TSA agent. And if you're using your passport, as I like to do, make sure that you already have it open to the page with your picture. And if you have it in a passport holder, make sure it's out of that passport holder. Now, there are some rare times that the TSA officer only needs to scan your boarding pass and does not need to look at your ID. But being the prepared person, I always like to have it ready anyway. 
And I'm going to do a little bit of a sidebar here. <laughs> In a couple of past videos, there has been some major pushback about using the term agent and officer interchangeably when referring to the TSA uniformed employees. So you know me, being the daughter of a librarian, I had to look it up. And both agent and officer are correct. Now that we have that very important clarification out of the way, mistake number 12 is not choosing the correct line to get in once your boarding pass has been approved. In some instances, you will have an officer directing you to a specific line, but most times you will have a few different lines to choose from. One tip here is to go to the far left lane. Because most people are right-handed, they have a tendency to get in the right line. You will also want to avoid lines with families, especially with small children, because they will need to be doing a lot of juggling as they go through security. The best bet is to look for lines with business travelers because they usually travel often and they know how to get through security quickly. Mistake number 13 is one of my pet peeves, and that is not listening to the directions the agents are giving. Now, I know it can be really, really hard to hear in some security lines. So if you can't hear the agent, just pay attention to what the people who are closer to the agent are doing. If they're not taking out their liquids bags, then you probably don't need to either. Coming back from Japan and going through security in Atlanta to get to my connecting flight, the TSA agent must have said, at least 30 times before we actually got to the conveyor belt that we did not have to take anything out of our bags, including computers and liquids bags. And you know, when we got all the way to the front and the person in front of me got to the conveyor belt, they started pulling out their laptop. I'm like, how, how in the world did you not hear those instructions over and over again, seriously? Don't be that person. <laughs> Mistake number 14 is not putting your items on the conveyor belt in the right order. I mean, there is no real right order, but I have an order I follow so I can keep an eye on my stuff for longer. If you are traveling carry-on only and you have a suitcase, I put that suitcase on first. Then I'll have a bin that has my jacket and shoes and liquids bags if it's necessary to put those items there. And sometimes I'll put my personal item bag in that same bin, but a lot of times I'll just put the personal item bag directly on the conveyor belt separately. Then finally, I will have a bin for my laptop. The idea here is that my laptop's gonna be the last item to come out of the conveyor belt screening. And by that point, I should be done going through my own person screening <laughs> and get there before my laptop comes out and is sitting there in a bin by itself. Mistake number 15, engaging the officers in unnecessary conversation or reversely, being very rude to the officers. Obviously, if you have a clarification question, please ask it, like whether you need to take your liquids out or if you can hold your passport when walking through the scanner. Now, I totally get it that you're gonna encounter all sorts of personalities when going through airport security. Sometimes I have the friendliest smiling agents and other times, I'm afraid if I look at them wrong, they're going to send me off to a holding cell. It's just really hard being a Southern gal who wants to be friendly to everyone and, you know, to be up there and not be able to smile and say hello or have a little quick conversation. But if you're not getting a friendly vibe from the officers, just keep moving through the line, doing exactly what you need to be doing, and just save your friendly for somebody else that day. Mistake number 16 is pulling other people's stuff off the conveyor belt or moving their bins to get to yours. There is an unspoken rule that you need to wait for people to pick up their own bins and their own stuff, and the only bins you should touch are the ones with your items. You may be in a hurry to move along and you just want to get to your stuff, but it's just rude to move other people's stuff. Along with this mistake is stepping in front of somebody waiting for their stuff off the conveyor belt. If they were in front of you going through the screener, then most likely their stuff is going to come out before yours. So there's 
no reason to rudely step in front of them, blocking their way or their view of their stuff coming through the conveyor belt. I am shocked <laughs> at how often this happens. So again, don't be that person either. Mistake number 17, not taking your bin with your stuff to another area to repack and rearrange. Do not stand at the conveyor belt to put your liquids bag back in your carry-on or to put on your shoes. There is limited space in this area and now you've become the person who is blocking everyone else from getting their items. Every airport I've been in has benches and tables just past the conveyor belts that you can carry your bins to and do all of the rearranging and shoe putting on and repacking that you need to do once you are through security. Plus, once you move to the benches or tables, you won't feel so rushed and you can take your own time to thoughtfully repack your stuff. Mistake number 18, not putting your bin back on the stack of bins. As I've said before, much like returning your shopping cart to the shopping cart corral, it's just rude not to return the bin to the stacks. But in addition to being a polite traveler, it also gives you another opportunity to make sure you haven't left something in the bottom of the bin, like your passport or cell phone. Those are the two most common items left at security screening. So you want to make sure you get everything out of that bin and put it away. Mistake number 19, not taking advantage of the TSA CARES program. If you are someone you are traveling with has any type of challenging situation that makes going through airport security difficult, you should reach out to the TSA CARES program to assist you. These challenges could be anything from physical issues like a broken leg or a pregnancy to emotional issues like dementia, autism, or even high anxiety. You can make an appointment with TSA CARES to have a TSA agent help you get through security as easily as possible. Unfortunately, I think this is still an incredibly underutilized program that the TSA offers, which is why I try to promote it as much as possible. I have done a whole video about this program, which I'll have linked below if you want more information for you or maybe somebody that you travel with. As I mentioned early in this video, how you pack your personal item can make a huge difference in how stressful airport security can be. This video here is how I pack my personal item for TSA success.